All right, this is a quick tutorial on the the new RNG manipulation you can do in Silent Hill 2. And quite easily, all you need to do is download this chart sheet here, either from the YouTube description or if you're watching on speedrun.com, there's a link right below the uh, video. And this is currently for the PC version. I haven't looked into the console version yet. Apparently it does work, so I'll make another video when I uh, get around to that. But yeah, so download this, <clears throat> and it'll show you the first 100 frames of different RNG seeds. So all you need to do is have this open, and then start the game. And you want to let the splash screens play out. Like that, and then start the game within three seconds quite easy once you've done that you've got an rng seed at this point so it doesn't matter how long you you know you can watch the cutscenes you can stand here for 20 minutes or whatever and um yeah once once you've actually started the game within three seconds or like you know within 100 frames which is just over three seconds because this runs at 30 fps um you then basically need to you know, play up to the uh, the clock, which is when you'll find, you'll actually find out which frame you're on by looking at the clock. There is a few duplicate clocks here though, so you need to be careful. But yeah, so get to the clock and then you can see what's going on. All right, so now we're at the clock. So now we can see what frame we're on. From looking at what the hands start with, so if we, Take a look at that, so it's it's 6.12 or 6.13, so we go into our list here. We look down the list and we'll find it, which is frame 50, so that is hopefully the one that we're on. The reason I say hopefully is because there are duplicate clocks, but obviously, you know, it, it doesn't seem like there's any clock similar to this, so... This is why you want to start the game within, you know, three seconds. You you really want to start the game, like, just after a second, because frame 33 here is actually the best one, or one of the best ones. But here we have frame 50, so 612 clock, and from this we can see what the blood code is going to be, what the carbon paper is going to be. The spin is what the... Uh, the blood code is basically input on, like, a cylinder type of lock. Spin is what the code is initially when you get to the lock. So, you know, the closer these are, the closer these two numbers are, the, the less you're going to have to spin it, obviously, which is going to save time. Uh, the bug room code, which if you're on PC, you can quick save, quick load, and skip that altogether if you want. Uh, the hangman's position, of which there's only, you know, there's one to six, and the briefcase code which is null so yeah we can see like all of the rng values just from looking at the clock unless you got a duplicate one which you know there's there's 956 there's a there's a few 956s in the first 100 frames so you know if that happens you can either reset or you can just you know play up to the hospital and hopefully guess which one you're going to be on. I mean, you know, they are pretty spread out, so it's, it, you know, if you've started the game, like, relatively quickly, then, you know, it could, it's most likely frame 18, but, yeah, it's up to you what you want to do in that situation. So what we'll do at this point is we'll play... By the way, you don't actually want to, uh, you know, alt tab out of the game at this point to look up the RNG. What I'd recommend doing is waiting until you've defeated Pyramid Head at the end of the apartments. Uh, that'll give you like 15 seconds as he's walking down the stairs and then you can, you know, look at the uh, the chart during that section. So I, I wouldn't recommend like pausing the game for like, you know, 30 plus seconds while looking at the list. You you basically just need to remember what the time was and then look at the clock from there. So 
One other thing as well, the whispers in this room are actually tied into whether you're getting the uh, position 1 arsonist or not. So apparently, if you get the whispers, there's a 52% chance that you have a position 1 arsonist. But looking at the seed that we've got, we already know we're not going to get a position number 1. And thus, no whispers. You could still possibly get whispers, like, even without a position number one arsonist, but you, you already know whether you've got the arsonist in position one or not for uh, from the clock, so you don't really need to uh, pay much attention to that. Interesting that it is actually tied to the RNG, though. And, yeah, this is the part that I was talking about earlier, so you've got about 15-20 seconds here to look at the list while Pyramid Head is walking away, so you might as well just do it here instead of, uh, you know, instead of pausing the game. I'm going to show you the hospital from the beginning because yeah you don't actually need to look at any of the codes well either of the codes I mean so yeah I'll I'll play this from uh, I'll play up to the the box obviously but I'm I want to show you from the beginning Of course, you still need to go to the roof and uh, drop Maria off, so those are actual triggers, you can't skip doing those. But looking at the actual codes, one of which is in the room that I just went past. The first code, the carbon code, is actually in this room. But we're not gonna we're not gonna look at it because we already know what what it is, so skip going in there and yeah we still we still have to drop Maria off so we go in here take the roof key and then head to the roof So this is a this is a bonus so you don't have to remember any codes you just basically need to remember the the clock until pyramid head and then uh, you know look at the uh, the chart so yeah usually the second chord the blood chord is in here again we're gonna skip going in there we're gonna go straight to the box very nice And if you look to the uh, the blood code, it is 1788, so we'll put that in. Whoops, 1788. And 7576. And there you go. And now you, obviously, that confirms if you're on the right frame or not, because, you know, there's literally thousands of different code combinations, so... If, if you get those two correct, then you know you're on the right frame. Coming up is the bug room, which uh, if you're on PC, like I said, you can easily uh, quick save, quick load to skip it. Of course, you, you can, you know, not do the quick save, quick load bug if you don't want to in which this uh, sheet will also help you.
So usually this is a one in six chance code. There'll be three, there'll be two or three numbers highlighted. And the order in which that you press them can be one of six. So use that. Hopefully James doesn't do that too often. And it's 891. There we go. And now for the arsonist. So you've got six, another one in six chance puzzle here. Uh, the arsonist position is referred to like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's like that, like it is in the game. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, we have number six there. So it's this one. Depending on riddle difficulty, um, you know, it can be... I think it's the thief on hard difficulty, and easy I don't remember, but it, it doesn't matter because this works the same way. It's just, uh, you know where, you know which one it is, like what the position is. But yeah, that's another one in six chance puzzle, which um, now you know which one it is quite easily. And finally, the briefcase. Alright, just to prove. Well, I unlocked the door there, so yeah, clearly I haven't been in here yet. But I'll, I'll take a look at this as well. So, yep. Yeah. And we know it's null, so we just go ahead. And there you go. So yep, that was frame 50. Now, of course, you want frame... Frame 33 is a is probably one of the best ones on this list anyway. Um, there's a few good ones, though. The one that we just did was not great, but... I mean, if you're just starting out learning the game... Um, you know, I, I honestly wouldn't worry about which clock you get, which arsonist position you get, etc. And one final thing you can check out is an application called Lucky Hill, made by a member of the community called Jokey. And this actually lets you go all the way up to frame 100,000. So if you were to sit on the menu for that long, then you, you can still, you know, tell what RNG seed you've got. And it also includes the, uh, the cube, the rotating room right before Maria's cell in the labyrinth. Because this is randomised on hard and riddle uh, hard and extra riddle difficulty. So if you select hard from that drop down, and you'll see all the different solutions, just like the other puzzles. And of course, the safe is also on there. If you uh, wanted to check that out as well. So really quick, we'll enter one of these codes here. So let's see. 7686. So we'll go to the blood code. 7686. And there you go. Frame 55. But it also, you know, it's all with, it's on all these other frames as well. So, yeah, I'd honestly recommend just uh, sticking with the first three seconds. Because it, it makes resetting a lot less painful anyways. And also, like, what are the chances you're going to, you know, hit one of these exact frames in, in the thousands? It's it's really unlikely. So, but, uh, yeah, so th this is a useful little application you can download and play about with. And, uh, yeah, hopefully this video will help you understand how the RNG manipulation works. It's really simple. Um, it, it, it looks a little bit complicated at first, but it really isn't, so, yeah. Thank you for watching, and uh, good luck with speedruns.